It's no secret that Yanukovych's coming to power has enriched the business empire of Dmitro Firtash, the co-owner of gas intermediary Rosukrenergo, thrown out of Russian gas supply schemes by Timoshenko in 2009, has fully rehabilitated himself with the change of the political situation. The influence of the Firtash group in the gas sphere is enormous. Ukraine's position in the gas conflict with Russia largely depends on the position of this group. However, by forgetting the past of the businessman, we do ourselves a disservice because times change and methods of enrichment don't. And the Firtash group has proven that in just one year and six months. Firtash was basically a nobody and would have remained so, a mid-range businessman, if not for Mogilevich. Those who don't know Semyon Mogilevich should look him up on the Interpol site. The gangster from the former Soviet Union is on the list of 10 most wanted criminals. After Osama bin Laden's elimination, Mogilevich has moved from third to second place on the list. He has access to so much including funding, including other criminal organizations, that he can, with a telephone call, affect the global economy. According to the FBI, the gangster's range of interests is immense. However, Mogilevich reached his greatest heights in oil and gas trade. In the 90s, the idea of mediation in the sale of Russian gas to Ukraine was not new and has already been mastered the company Itera. Itera's partners in Ukraine were Pavlo Lazarenko, Yulia Timoshenko and their company, Unified Energy Systems of Ukraine. Itero was pushed out and in 2003 the company Ural Transgas received a monopoly on the supply of all Turkmen gas through Russia to Ukraine. Numerous investigations of journalists and European human rights activists proved that this was Semyon Mogilevich's business, which he successfully managed due to corruption of the highest officials of Ukraine and Russia. Originally, they established Ural Trans Gas. This company was clearly with Mr. Mogilevich. Ural Trans Gas was registered by Dmitro Firtash, a technical worker at the time. He was unknown then, but he was engaged in registration of these companies. By 2004, Mogilevich was of critical interest to American law enforcement. This increased interest to the gangster and his scandalous brainchild, Ural Transgas, made future activities of the firm impossible. Rosukrenergo was created in its place. Um, well, Rosukrenergo was established in July 2004 in the Crimea by President Kuchma, President Putin. And then Yuri Boyko was the uh, head of Naftohaz Ukraini. And so most Western experts describe Yuri Boyko as the godfather of Rosukenergo, the person who maybe dreamt this up. I'm convinced that such ties do not break and Mogilevich is not the person who can just let one of his managers go and give him the means to earn billions provided by Mogilevich. Fate played a cruel joke with Dmitro Firtash, the businessman who spent lots of money and resources to erase his strong association with Mogilevich, eventually became the victim of his own sincerity and the information revolution by Wikileaks publications. One quiet winter evening, the Ukrainian oligarch Dmitro Firtash came to a meeting with U.S. Ambassador William Taylor. None of counterparts could have assumed that in two years full text of their intimate conversation would be read online. The ambassador asked Firtash to address his alleged ties to Russian organized crime bosses like Semyon Mogilevich. Firtash answered that many Westerners do not understand what Ukraine was like after the breakup of the Soviet Union. He noted that it was impossible to approach a government official for any reason without also meeting with an organized crime member at the same time. Firtash acknowledged that he needed and received permission from Mogilevich when he established various businesses, but he denied any close relationship to him. Factual evidence and Firtash's frank confession proved to the world the gas intermediary between Ukraine and Russia was under protection from the mafia. Thanks to lobbyists in the government, the scheme continued to operate successfully for many years. Yuri Boyko is one of the key figures in the Dmitro Firtash group in politics. 
In 2004, he became its founding member and at the same, being head of Naftogaz, signed an agreement with RUE to supply gas to Ukraine. I don't remember when I got in and got out. It was a purely technical procedure. Now I have no connection to it. I've said it officially on camera. After the Orange Revolution in 2004, relations with Moscow tensed and a gas crisis loomed. It seemed that Metro Firtas was a person from the times of President Kuchma and Prime Minister Yanukovych, but his business pragmatism was so strong that he managed to make a deal with Yushchenko. What was Ros Ukrainergo? It was a formula to attend to the personal needs and interests of Ukrainian President Yushchenko. Only in 2009, when Yulia Tymoshenko became prime minister again, she did get to Ros Ukrainergo. For her, Firtash was enemy number one. The gas oligarch explained that the gas princess invited him as a more successful competitor in the field. As a result of a lengthy and problematic gas negotiations with Russia that are currently debated in court, Prime Minister Tymoshenko returned from Moscow with a direct contract between Naftogaz and Gazprom. The intermediary was finished. All contracts that are signed, they are direct between Naftogaz Ukraine and Gazprom Russia. There will be no more corrupt intermediaries between Kiev and Moscow. The contract also had a supplement which Tymoshenko was especially proud of. The two premiers agreed that Naftogaz pays Gazprom $1.7 billion for the right to demand gas for that amount from Rosokranergo at $153 per thousand cubic meters, 11 billion cubic meters of gas overall. Head of Customs Anatoly Makarenko cleared the RUE gas and Naftogaz deputy head Igor Didenko took it on the balance of Naftogaz. Meanwhile, Firtash decided to sue. The Stockholm arbitration took up the case Rosokranergo with Naftogaz. Later, when Yanukovych became president and gave people from the Firtash group key positions, Naftogaz, headed by Yevhen Bakulin, a protégé of Boyko, simply bowed down before Osokranergo and surrendered to the private company, which is written in black and white in the decision. In Stockholm, there was a conspiracy. The government called it a direct loss to the state and immediately began a witch hunt. To return the gas, you need to find someone to blame from the previous government. Makarenko and Didenko sat behind bars for over a year. The latter has already received a verdict, three years imprisonment with a probation term. Yulia should be made the criminal, not them, because the question is, who stole the 11.5 billion cubic meters of gas from the storages? who stole them and where did they go to. It was an unprecedented operation for the state of Naftogaz, which of course worsened its financial position. Now, because of ineffective management, the strategically important company Naftogaz is being prepared for liquidation and partitioning into several companies with different profiles for further privatization. We plan to start privatizing these companies next year. This will provide us with an additional 10 to 12 billion dollars. A suspicion creeps in. What if Naftogaz is being partitioned to transfer it into specific private hands? Can this strategically important mission be entrusted to officials who had plundered Naftogaz? Despite the constant cries about Naftogaz's growing debt, this year its subsidiary company Chernomor Naftogaz managed to overpay $150 million for the purchase of an oil rig. The rig with the market value of $250 million was purchased by Ukraine from a fictitious offshore intermediary with the nominee directors for $400 million. Such large-scale acquisitions are never made without the consent of the man in charge. The Metro Firtash's gas lobby has led Naftogaz to bankruptcy and now will take part in its sale. And all this under a noble banner, cheap gas for Ukraine. This is a noble goal, but whom it is intended for? 
gas prices for households will continue to grow. It's an IMF requirement. The second largest consumer of natural gas in Ukraine after the population is Metro Firtash. His monopolized chemical industry functions exclusively on Russian gas. Higher gas prices mean less income for Metro Firtash. So whom is the Ukrainian government protecting in the oil and gas sector? National interest or business interest of Dmitro Firtash's empire? People with distinct biographies clearly linked to the mob currently determine the fate of the Ukrainian opposition, block European integration and have now taken up their favorite sphere, the oil and gas sector. If Ukraine's fate is decided by people with such a dark past, is there hope for a brighter future?